Oliver was attacked in his flat and taken to the hospital. There are four suspects, all of them Oliver's neighbors. Wow, I'd find another apartment. Amelia said she'd been walking in the park since early morning. Henry explained he had been painting in his studio and had heard nothing. Jacob said he had been repairing his car. Sophia answered she'd been taking a bath for the past three hours. Look at these people's hands and try to figure out who's lying. It's a bit strange that Jacob, who was repairing his car, and Henry, who was painting, both have such clean hands. But they could be wearing gloves. On the other hand, Sophia's hands and fingers don't have wrinkles. But it would be a natural skin reaction after three hours in a bathtub. Sophia, you've been caught red, I mean, smooth-handed. The police found out there was a new smuggler in town. Three people were under suspicion. Luna, a school bus driver, Jackson, a fire truck driver, and Daniel, an ambulance driver. All of them claim to have been busy with their work since the very morning. Can you figure out who's the smuggler? Look at the car Daniel drives. On such vehicles, the word ambulance is normally written backward. It's done so that other drivers can instantly read the inverted word in their rearview mirrors. Well, it seems Daniel has given himself away. It was the day when Jacob was supposed to be discharged from the hospital. He had spent a couple of months there and underwent several surgeries. His doctor told him he was going to be fine. It was safe for Jacob to leave the hospital. But the guy didn't believe these promises. In low spirits, he walked home. On the way, he accidentally bumps into an elderly lady. She gets furious and started to shout at Jacob. But instead of arguing back, he hugged the woman and ran home. Why? Jacob had hearing loss. He didn't believe his problem could be helped. But when he heard the woman shouting at him, he realized the doctor had told him the truth. Maybe the doctor should have shouted. (laughs) Chloe stayed late at the office that day. When she was driving home, the woman was worn out. At one moment, she even started to doze off. That's when it happened. She spun off the road and crashed through the fence that was on her way. She couldn't control the car anymore. It slipped down a steep hill and ended up in a lake. Chloe couldn't move her arms, they were stuck. She couldn't undo her seatbelt or open the door. The car sank to the bottom of the lake. Was Chloe doomed? Rescuers arrived three hours later. The woman was still in the car, but she was alive. How did she survive? After the car hit the bottom of the lake, The water only came up to Chloe's throat. It was a very shallow lake. Good thing, huh? It was Jack's birthday, and the fellow got a present he had been dreaming about for ages. A motorbike. The next morning, he rode his bike to college and left it at the parking lot. During lunchtime, Jack decided to check on his motorbike. Imagine his horror when he found out someone had broken the mirrors. The security guard told Jack, Only three other people had left his building in the afternoon. They were Owen and Sam, two best friends, and Layla, the girl who once liked Jack but got turned down by him. Owen said he and Sam had gone to the campus cafe to get sandwiches for lunch. Sam confirmed this. He then added the bike could have been damaged by Layla out of revenge. But Layla told Jack her mother had visited her and they had spent two hours together. So, who's lying? Owen has a paper bag with food delivery written on it. It means the guys ordered their lunch, not bought it in the cafe. They broke Jack's mirrors and tried to frame Layla. Not a good reflection on them, huh? Detective Taylor was chasing a dangerous criminal. Suddenly, the man entered a hospital. Oh no, there are hundreds of rooms there. 
Luckily, it was raining, and the criminal left footprints on the hospital floor. The detective followed them and got into a small room. There were three people there, all covered in bandages from head to toe. But one of them was a fake patient. Who? It was the dude in the middle. He didn't even have a medical chart next to his bed. Very quick job on the bandages, though. The CEO of a large company called the police. He was sure that one of his employees, Victoria, had stolen a memory card with secret information. She was going to sell it to their competitors. The police arrived at Victoria's house, but the woman didn't let them in without a warrant. The officers had to leave to get all the necessary papers. By the time they were back, Victoria had already been sitting in her car, ready to drive off. The police officers arrested the woman. They searched her car and clothes, but found nothing. And then, when they were about to give up, one of the detectives realized where Victoria kept the memory card. Can you figure it out? When the police first came to her, the woman had her hair down. But after that, Victoria changed her hairstyle. The memory card is in her bun. Yep, Victoria and her sticky bun. (laughs) Michael was going home from the gym when everything went black. When he regained consciousness, he found out he was in a locked room. Next to the door, there was a computer with a keyboard. On the screen, there was a riddle. Michael had to write the correct answer and the door would open. The riddle went like this. It makes two people out of one. What is it? Michael typed the needed word and the door opened. He was free to go. What was the answer? It's a mirror. Oh, I was guessing a buzzsaw, but this one is better and not as messy. Two best friends, Emily and Luna, came to a popular and expensive hair salon. At first, the administrator told the girls they had just one available hairstylist. But after making a phone call, she happily announced she had found another hairdresser. Emily and Luna could have their hair done at the same time. But in the process, it dawned on the girls that one of the hairstylists was fake. Which one? Both hairstylists are using regular scissors, but instead of hairspray, the one on the left is holding a can of bug spray. Yeah, that's a big clue right there. A man on a bike grabbed Sarah's bag with all her documents, money, and smartphone and sped off. The only way the girl can get her bag back is by taking someone's car and driving after the criminal. There are three vehicles parked nearby. Which one can Sarah break into and drive off? Whoops, I mean borrow. A man is sitting in the blue car. That's no good. If she decides to take the red car, CCTV will spot her. Her only option is the brown vehicle. Oh, and Sarah, don't forget to return the wheels when you get your bag back, otherwise you'll be Grand Theft Sarah. Mary and her younger brother Alex were mushroom hunting in the forest. Wait, mushroom hunting? What do you do, sneak up on them so they don't escape? Anyway, they started to quarrel. Alex got angry and ran away. After several minutes, Mary rushed after him. She was still fuming, but also worried. Soon, the girl reached a small river. A man was sitting on the shore. Um, did you see a teenager here? Mary asked. Yep, he's just taken a boat and made it to the other side. But Mary didn't believe the man. Why? The boat is indeed on the other side, but the paddles are lying next to the man. How could the boy cross the river without them? So, where's Alex? Kidnapped by the escaped mushrooms? We may never know. Ella came to a party that took place in her best friend's house. It was a riddle party. 
all the guests had to crack mysteries and participate in different challenges. Ella's task was to get out of a locked room in the basement. The girl was blindfolded, taken downstairs, and left alone. After pulling the piece of cloth off her eyes, Ella noticed the door had a code lock. She also spotted a sheet of paper lying on the floor next to the door. There were four flowers drawn there. Ella looked at them for a while and entered the correct code. The door opened and the girl joined the party. So what was the code? Ella counted the petals on each flower. The code was 5748. Carter was visiting his friend Matteo, who lived in another city. Matteo loved riddles. In the evening, he challenged Carter to get the key to the guest room where the guy was supposed to be sleeping. Matteo dropped the key in the bucket filled with cold water and told Carter to get it. But he couldn't touch the water or use anything to pull the key out. That night, Carter slept in the guest room. How did he get the key? He put the bucket over a fire. The water started to boil and soon evaporated. After that, Carter picked the key up. Matteo was steamed. Nora was an insurance agent. Once, her client called her early in the morning. The woman was in tears. At night, someone had broken into her house. By the time the woman had enough courage to go downstairs, the thief had already taken all the valuables. When she looked out of the window, the man was running away. Do you remember what he looked like? Nora asked. The client answered, It was still dark outside. I understood it was a man, tall and thin. He had dark hair and was wearing a v-neck t-shirt. Nora immediately realized her client had staged the burglary. How did she figure it out? It was dark, and the man was running away from the client's house. Then how could the woman see he was wearing a v-neck t-shirt? Beats me. Mr. Morrison was the owner of a small company. Only four people worked there. One day, he came to the office and didn't find his favorite slippers. He always put them on while working. The man searched everywhere and finally spotted them on the roof of the building. Mr. Morrison was furious. He entered the office and started to question his employees. Daniel said, I don't even know where you keep your slippers. Andrew said, I'm terrified of heights. I have never climbed up there. Sandra said, I'm wearing high heels today. I can hardly walk in them. Emily said, I respect you too much to do it to you. One of the employees is lying. Who is it? It's Andrew. He said he was afraid of heights. But on his table, there's a photo in which he's skydiving with a parachute. Uh Uh-oh. Melissa's boyfriend proposed to her and presented a beautiful diamond ring. The girl was afraid of losing it. That's why she kept it in a box on her vanity table. Once, after a long and difficult working day, the girl came home and went straight to bed. When she woke up, the ring was gone. Melissa called the police. They asked three suspects, Melissa's roommate, her best friend, and her neighbor, what they had been doing the night before. Helen, Melissa's roommate for the last three years, said Melissa had indeed looked very tired. She took the tea Helen made for her and went to her room at 10 p.m. Helen went to bed shortly after. Eric, Melissa's best friend, said he had come to visit Melissa at about 11.30 p.m. The girl was already sleeping, but he saw a jewelry box lying open on the table. It was empty. Eric was surprised and left immediately after that. Brenda, the neighbor, said she wanted to borrow a book from Melissa, but when she called her, the girl didn't answer. So Brenda decided not to bother her so late at night. The police soon realized one of these people was lying. Who was it? It was Eric. He was only asked what he had been doing the evening before, but he mentioned the jewelry box. He must have known the ring was missing because he took it. A group of friends went camping. 
they found a beautiful place in the forest near the river. They were planning to spend a week there. But on the third day, Chris disappeared. The rest of the group gathered near a campfire to figure out where we could be. Paul said, We didn't have enough firewood. I went deeper into the forest to get some. When I came back, Chris was already gone. Ashley said, I was near the river washing my t-shirt. I stained it with ketchup during lunch. Nancy said, I felt unwell, so I decided to take a nap. I was sleeping when an owl woke me up. One of the young people is lying. Do you know who it is? It's Nancy. Owls sleep during the day. It means an owl couldn't have woken a girl. Someone started a gas leak in Mark's apartment. Luckily, the man noticed it. He called the police. After searching the place, they found a watch. Mark claimed it wasn't his. The detective decided to set up an ambush. The watch looked expensive. Surely, the criminal would return to get it back. At around midnight, they heard the key turn in the door lock. In a while, a man came in. He was holding a lit candle in his hands. At first, the detective wanted to arrest the man. But after a while, he realized it wasn't the person they had been waiting for. How did he figure it out? Whatever the man was doing in Mark's apartment, he wasn't the one responsible for the gas leak. That criminal wouldn't have entered the apartment holding a burning candle they would be sure the place was still full of gas. The police found out one particular gang was going to rob a bank. An undercover agent was sent to the restaurant where the criminals always gathered in the evening. His task was to attach a tiny GPS tracker to one of the gang members. Then the police would know about their location and would be able to prevent the robbery. The leader of the gang was the mastermind of the group. All other members were just muscle. The undercover officer had to be very attentive around the leader. The man could easily spot the device. But no other gang member would notice it. Where should the agent place the tracker? On the gang leader's backpack. He's the only person who can spot the device, but not if it's on his own back. Police got a call from the house of a wealthy man. He didn't come home after going for a jog. When several police officers arrived, they questioned all the people in the house. They were the maid, the millionaire's wife, and his driver. The maid said, When Mr. Jones went for a jog, he asked me to prepare his breakfast. I immediately got down to work. But it's been three hours, and he hasn't returned yet. The wife was worried too. I saw him in the morning, but he was in a hurry. We just greeted each other, and I went to work. The driver told the police he had been waiting for his boss in the car, scrolling through his social media. Who knows something about the millionaire's disappearance? The maid is lying. If she had cut the apples for breakfast three hours ago, they would have already turned brown by now. Shirley got a new job as a sales assistant. She was extremely happy to receive her first salary. She went out for a walk in the park and decided to treat herself to some ice cream. She pulled out cash, but a powerful gust of wind has blown the money out of her hands. The girl managed to pick it up. But then she realized one $10 bill was missing. Shirley looked around. One of these people must have taken the bill. Can you figure out who it was? It's the man in the red baseball cap. The bill is under his right foot. Detective Larson was walking along the street. Suddenly, he saw a man grab an elderly woman's bag and run away. The detective immediately rushed after the criminal, but the man disappeared behind the kitchen door of a small restaurant. When Detective Larson entered, he saw three cooks preparing food. Which cook is fake? It's the man holding the salad bowl. He's the only one not wearing gloves. People began to disappear in a large town. One month after it started, the police came across an abandoned house. In its basement, they found two men. Each of them claimed that he had been locked up there and that the other man was the one to keep him in the basement. 
but it was clear that only one of them was telling the truth. Look at these men attentively and say who's the liar. It's the man who's smiling. If he had spent four weeks locked up, he would have a beard and mustache by now. But he is clean-shaven. Rachel Brown, the owner of a large and successful company, has disappeared right from her office. The police suspect that some of her subordinates might know where the woman is. They question three people. Ruth, the HR manager, is the first to enter. We were going to fire an employee that day. I came to get Miss Brown's signature. Adam, the accountant, says, I indeed came to her office. She had to approve the company's budget for the next year. And the secretary comes in last. I saw Ms. Brown today, but only for a minute or so. I asked her to sign my leave request. The police officers immediately realize who is lying. Can you figure it out too? Anne is lying. The signature on her documents is different from the others. Plus, she is the person Ruth was going to fire that day. Martin bought a car in September, and now, just a month later, it's stolen. The police have four suspects, and all of them are Martin's friends. The crime happened at 10 p.m. on Wednesday. At that time, Alan was playing badminton in the park. Natalie was driving home from work. Roy was walking with his dog, and Rose was doing some grocery shopping. Who took Martin's car? It was Alan. At 10 p.m. in October, it's too dark to play badminton. Eric was having lunch in a cafe. At some moment, he went to the bathroom and left his smartphone on the table. But when he came back, the phone was gone. Eric saw a man leaving the cafe and hurried after him. The guy only caught up with the man when he was about to sit in his car. Eric asked the man to give him his gadget back. But the man looked confused. I know nothing about your phone. I only gave my friends a lift. They work over there. And he pointed at two men entering an office building. After hearing this, Eric immediately called the police. Why? The man lied. His car was a sports convertible with just two seats. Such a car wouldn't fit three men. Oh, by the way, you get extra points if you caught the fact that Eric called the police. With what? His smartphone had been stolen. (laughs) You're a special agent racing at high speed in an expensive car along a four-lane highway. You're breaking all the road rules because you need to get home before it's too late. You're running a red light, the police are chasing you, and you speed up. Finally, you arrive at your street and see that your house is on fire. You run inside. All you see is flames. There are two doors. One of them leads to a safe with secret documents of great importance. A suitcase with millions of dollars is behind the second door. You have very little time to choose what you save. You take the suitcase with the money. Modern safes are fireproof. The secret documents will be safe. You run out of the house and wait for the fire to burn out. A police car pulls up. At first, they want to arrest you for dangerous driving, but they don't. Why? Because you're a special agent, remember? Now you're heading to your office. It's inside a secret base outside of the city. You meet your boss and she tells you she's going to fire you because you failed your most recent mission. But since you've always had a good relationship, your boss lets you choose any official way of dismissal. It can be your own desire, damage to the company image, or anything else. What will you choose to stay in the company as long as possible? Tell them you want to be dismissed when you've reached the age of retirement. But in the evening, sitting at home, you realize that you're actually tired of working as a special agent. So you decide to choose another, quieter job. You've always liked wood carving. You go online and see that there are only two furniture factories in the city. You come for an interview to the first company. You see that the furniture looks very bad and the boss seems unhappy. 
The next day, you go to another office. It has beautiful furniture and a kind boss. Now you have to choose which factory you want to work for. Think about it carefully. Of course, you should opt for the second company. There's beautiful furniture and a good boss. Did you think this was a trick question? You go home after the interview and decide to visit a flower store to buy a house plant. You walk around the town and see two buildings. The first one looks beautiful and stylish. Its walls are painted with beautiful flowers. A neon sign is hanging over the entrance. But there are no windows. The second building is old. The paint on the door is peeling. Some windows are broken. Where will you go to buy flowers? You choose the old building. Sunlight gets there through the windows, and this is necessary for plants to grow. You go inside the building and see three doors. The first door has a werewolf painted on it. A photo of a vampire is on the second door. A man with a chainsaw is painted on the third door. Which room will you choose? Only one of the three is a real danger. There can't be a werewolf since it's not a full moon yet. The vampire is afraid of sunlight and all the windows in the building are wide open. These two rooms are safe. You buy a house plant and leave. You go to the town square and see seven people. They seem to be regular passers-by, but you feel there are several suspicious people among them. Find them all. That guy over there is reading a newspaper, but it's turned upside down. It means he's secretly watching you. This girl is holding a radio transmitter with an antenna behind her back. And this old lady in sunglasses seems to be feeding pigeons, but her glasses are flashing with red light. There's a hidden video camera there. You throw the plant to the ground, run away from this place, and hide in an alley. On the wall of a brick building, you see several posters with different girls. A girl named Erica lives in America. Tina seems to be in Argentina. But where's Olivia? The correct answer is Bolivia. You get on a bus and go to your secret house. No one knows about it. You get off at your bus stop and climb the hill. There are three bridges across the river. People are standing at the other side of each bridge. One of these people wants to catch you, but who? It's that guy. You've seen him before. He's the one who is reading the newspaper. You cross the bridge over the river and finally arrive at your home. It's a huge round-shaped building. There are round rooms inside. You go to the living room and find a broken mirror. Your maid, gardener, and cook were supposed to visit your house today. The cook says he hasn't been to the house at all today. The gardener's been cutting flowers outside. And the maid said she's been sweeping the corners in all rooms of the top floor and hasn't broken the mirror. Who will you believe? The maid said she had been sweeping the corners, but the house is round. There are no corners here, but come on. The woman meant it as a figure of speech. She was really cleaning up. But do you see this pot in the kitchen? Light steam is coming out of it. This means the cook has actually been to the house today. He lied, which can only mean he broke the mirror. You forgive the cook and decide to walk around the house. You go to the kitchen and think, it's a good kitchen. Then you go to the cellar. This is a good cellar. You go to a good living room, then visit a good bathroom. In the end, you enter a room that is not so good. What room is this? It's your bedroom. You leave the house and get into a new, fast car. You're driving along an empty road at low speed and notice there's no brake pedal in the car. The road ends at the edge of a cliff. You can jump out of the car, but you don't want to abandon it. 
Luckily, you still have some time to think. How can you slow down? You're still moving because your foot is on the gas pedal. Just release the pedal. The car will slow down and stop. You leave the car and feel hungry. You come to the restaurant where they serve buffet meals. You approach the table with strawberries, raspberries, bananas, and apples. Some of these fruits are not fresh. Which? All of the fruit trays are almost empty, but there are a lot of strawberries left. People don't take them, so they're probably not very fresh. After eating, you go for a walk to the beach. You notice two strangers behind. They're following you, so you start walking faster. Finally, you manage to hide behind a big old boat, but the pursuers still find you. How did they do it? You've left footsteps in the sand. You decide to hide in a big old building. You put on a pair of glasses equipped with a thermal imager and walk through the ruins. Suddenly, you hear strange sounds. You turn on the flashlight and illuminate a small hall. Three zombies are heading towards you. You're about to run away, but then you realize they're not real zombies. How did you understand it? You have the thermal imager. It shows that the zombies' bodies are warm, which means they're regular people. Zombies don't produce heat. You leave the old building and see three paths in front of you. The first way leads into a swamp. The second path is covered with hot coals. The third path is swarming with venomous scorpions. Which one will you opt for? You wear sturdy shoes, running on the coals won't hurt you. After all these weird events, you return home and go to bed. It's time to check the number of correct answers and find out if you're a good special agent. 0 to 4 points. Body and mind training. This is what you need if you want to become a great agent. 5 to 8 points. Do not rush to ask for a secret mission. You haven't finished your special agent courses yet. Study harder to become a world-class agent. 9 to 12 points, you're unlikely to save the world, but you can help your neighborhood. A little more effort and you will learn how to perform secret missions on a global scale. 13 to 15 points, you're a really good agent. All this is a routine for you. You always complete dangerous missions, even if they seem to be impossible to others. You suddenly wake up trapped in a dark room. Your only source of light is a candle. There are two doors in front of you. Behind one of them, there's a tunnel that will lead you outside to freedom. Behind the other, just a cold brick wall. You have a key that will open only one of the doors, and you can try it just once. So how do you know which door to try? Hold the candle up to each keyhole. The flame will move near the door that leads outside. You escape to freedom, but you need to send some important documents to your friend Beth. You can't mail them in a regular package because the precious papers will get stolen. So you put them in a box and lock it. But Beth doesn't have the key to this lock. How can you send the papers if you can't send the key to the lock separately? First, send the lock box to Beth. She'll attach her own lock and send the box back to you. Then, remove your own lock and send the package again. Beth can then remove her lock and finally open the package. Bad news! You get a call one morning from Beth. She says the crucial documents were stolen from her office. They'd been on the desk the evening before, but are nowhere to be found this morning. You immediately go there to question the employees. In no time, you gather three suspects. Sean said he had been at the movies last night. Michael had taken his girlfriend to an amusement park. And Christina was at a prestigious art gallery. 
Who's lying? Sean. His movie ticket isn't torn. Having been caught red-handed, Sean makes a break for it. He hops in his car and drives away. Law enforcement are on the lookout. Sean sees a police car right ahead of him and starts driving toward it. Why would he do that? He was on a bridge. He needed to go toward the patrol car to get to the other side and make his escape. No such luck for poor Sean. He gets caught and locked up. But he starts hearing rumors of an inmate planning to break out. The guards have two suspects. First, a quiet bookworm who spends most of his days with his nose buried in sci-fi novels. The second, a big burly tattooed guy who's always working out. Who should Sean become friends with if he wants to get out of here? The bookworm. Look closer, and you'll see his bookmark is actually a file. On Friday afternoon, the owner of that same prestigious art gallery discovered that four of the most famous artist's self-portraits had been stolen during an exhibition. The police show up to do an investigation, and now they have three suspects. Sarah, the artist, said she disappeared into one of the studios to paint. John, the security guard, explained he was just waiting outside and had no idea the portraits were gone. Daniel, the caterer, stated he was at a nearby store picking up extra napkins when the robbery took place. So, who's the thief? It's the security guard. He couldn't have known the stolen paintings were portraits if he was standing outside. As fate would have it, there was another incident that night. Michael, who never really liked what passed for art in modern times, rushed into the gallery and caused millions of dollars worth of damage to several paintings. Yet the gallery's owner thanked him for his actions. How come? Michael is a firefighter. The water from his hose damaged several masterpieces, but he still managed to extinguish the fire and save many more works. They awarded Michael a big check in gratitude. He heads home just in time to get his five kids all packed up for a camping trip that weekend. Mike and his wife are really looking forward to having the weekend for themselves to relax. But when they woke up on Saturday, they discovered the check was missing from their safe. Once the officers showed up, they interviewed the three people who were in the house that morning. The chef said he was in the kitchen getting school lunches packed. The cleaner said he finished cleaning quickly that day and left early. The butler had just gotten back after taking the kids to camp three hours away. Who's lying? It's the chef. It's Saturday, so there's no school, and the kids have gone camping. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, a scientist is working on something bizarre. He invites Kevin and Claire as blind test subjects for his new serum invention. He gives them each a glass of ice-cold lemonade. Kevin drinks his fast, but Claire apprehensively waits to see the side effects on him first. After two hours, nothing happens. So she drinks her glass. Two minutes later, her skin turns green. If both the drinks had the serum, why was only Claire affected? The serum was in the ice. Since Kevin drank his fast, none of it got in the lemonade. Claire runs out of the lab in horror. She gets in her car and speeds off. As she's driving down a long, empty road, one of her tires pops off. Good thing she has a spare in the trunk. But here's the problem. She now has no lug nuts to put the spare on with. So what should Claire do? (laughs) 
Unscrew one lug nut from each of the other three wheels and use them to attach the spare tire. It'll be enough to get to the nearest garage safely. As Claire is putting on her spare tire, the scientist catches up to her. He hands her four pills and tells her it's a complex cure to the green face serum. Two of the pills are an antidote, and the other two are a catalyst that activates it. Claire must take one of each type together. If she takes two of the same, her face will stay green forever. Just as the scientist is handing her the pills, he trips and they get all mixed up. They look identical. What should Claire do? Grind the tablets up, mix all the powder together, and divide it in two parts. Each half will have the same amount of catalyst and antidote. It worked! And just in time! Whew. The next day, Claire has a big calculus exam. But funny enough, all the students in the class refuse to take it. Professor Miller can expel only one student for skipping the test. All of them know each other's names. If a student knows they'll be expelled, they agree to take the test. How can the professor make all the students take it? She should tell them she'll expel the student whose name comes first alphabetically. Then this person won't skip the test. The next person on the list won't skip either, and so on until the end of the list. Professor Miller grabs her cup of coffee, takes a sip, goes to set it down, and what's this? It's stuck to her hand! Somebody put glue on the cup, and she's got three suspects. Look carefully to find out which student is playing tricks on the professor. Sure, the first student has an awfully guilt-ridden look on his face. And the second student's smile looks just like pride for a job well done. But look closer at the third student's pocket. Yep, it's the tip of a glue bottle. Professor Miller is so annoyed by her class's shenanigans, she decides to change her career. Wow. She opens a shoe factory. She's so successful that she builds a second one in another city. But despite her success, the problems don't end. Her employees keep secretly taking shoes from the plant. What can she do to resolve the issue? Have one of her factories start making only left shoes and the other only right ones. One of those shoe swipers is driving a semi-truck full of shoes to sell for a profit. He comes to a tunnel and there's a major problem. His truck is just an inch too tall. But he can still drive through the tunnel. How? Let some of the air out of the tires. It'll lower the truck just enough. When the shoe swiper gets through the tunnel, he comes to a fork in the road. One goes to the town, the other to never-ending wilderness. There are guides standing at each. The catch? One always tells the truth, the other always lies. The driver doesn't know who's who, and he's only allowed one question. What should he ask to find out which road goes to town? Ask either one of the guides which road the other would say is the right way. Then, he must choose the opposite. The truth-teller knows the other will lie, so they'll point the driver toward the road to nowhere. If he asks the liar, they'll know the other guard would honestly point him toward the town, so they'll, again, recommend the road to nowhere. The shoe thief takes the road to town, but he has another puzzle to answer before he's allowed to enter. The guard at the gate asks him one simple question. What's the logic in the order of the following words? Fun, blue, be, more, and dive.
every word rhymes with its number on the list. Fun 1, blue 2, B3, and so on. The shoe swiper finally settles down in this new town. Too bad for him, he can only use a payphone to make calls. One day, the phone breaks. He informs the phone company, but they do nothing. He tries again the next day. Same result. The third time, he finally gets them to come out and fix the phone. So what did he say? He claimed that people were making calls without paying. Amy lives in a cozy townhouse with three roommates. Jill, Alice, and Nora. Can you guess which one of these four roommates belongs to Amy? See this comb with green hair in the first room? It looks just like Nora's hair color, so it's probably her room. In the second room, there's a sock under the bed. Jill's wearing the same sock on her left foot, so let's exclude the second room too. And now, let's take a look at the fourth room. There's a decoration on the wall, a large letter A. Therefore, this could be both Amy's room and Alice's room. But how can we guess who lives there? Very simple. In the third room, there's a yellow jacket hanging on the back of the chair. And Alice is wearing yellow trousers. These are two parts of one suit. Therefore, Amy lives in the fourth room. Bob entered a coffee shop. Suddenly, he realized that he'd forgotten his wallet at home, so he didn't have any money to pay for his drink. Jake, the barista, offered Bob a deal. I'm going to tell you three facts about myself. If you manage to spot one lie, your drink is free. Bob agreed. Here's the first fact. Jake has three brothers. Next, Jake hates the color red. And the third one, he has a PhD in philosophy. Can you help Bob get his free drink? The second fact is false. Jake's phone case is red, but he said that he hated that color. Will and Frank went hiking and found a beautiful spot on a deserted beach. They set up camp to settle down for the night. The next morning, the guys got out of the tent and found out that someone had stolen all food supplies and fishing equipment. Take a look at this picture. Can you guess who stole the food? There are no animal tracks on the sand, but that doesn't prove anything. Pay attention to the water level. In the evening, it was significantly lower. Nobody stole their food. Waves washed away their bags. Can you see this carrot in the water? Someone robbed a famous jewelry shop this night between 2 and 3 a.m. In the morning, the owner called the police. He wanted this kept quiet, so he didn't share any details with the journalists. The officers have found suspects previously accused of similar robberies and asked them just one question. What were you doing last night? Peter said, Between 2 and 3 a.m., I was playing video games with my friend. He can confirm my words. Bill replied, I watched a TV show with my family and went to bed at 11 p.m. Rick said that he had spent the whole night in a nightclub because he was a DJ. Who robbed the bank? Peter how could he know the exact time of the robbery? These customers look pretty innocent, but one of them is a thief. Can you guess who? This lady's hiding a pizza in her bag. Take a look at these two guys. Which one of them isn't smart?
The lady is acting less smart. The pilot has a co-pilot at least. Can you find anything odd here? This pen is from another century. Fiona woke up in a creepy abandoned castle. She searched the area and found some old furniture and these four doors leading to freedom. But each door is hiding dangerous creatures. An angry dragon is waiting behind the first door. The floor behind the second door is all covered with venomous snakes. There's a gorgon behind the third door. She turns to stone everyone she looks at. And there's a wicked werewolf behind the fourth door. Can you help Fiona choose the safest door? She should take the mirror and show it to the Gorgon. She will turn herself into stone and Fiona will be able to escape through the third door. Jill used to be a professional dancer. Finally, she fulfilled her dream and opened a dance studio in Chicago. Her business gained popularity in the neighborhood very quickly. But one weekend, someone robbed the studio. The criminal took all the money and broke the mirrors. Jill called the police and they interrogated four suspects. Dan said that he'd been on a business trip in Seattle. Anna said she spent all weekend at her favorite ski resort preparing for the Winter Olympics. Alex was spending time with his dog at home. And Nina was taking care of her sick boyfriend all night. Who's lying? Anna, look at the street. It's summertime. How would she train at the ski resort? Rachel and Mike went on a date. They saw this weird restaurant and decided to check it out. The cook offered them chicken salad, mushroom soup, fish, pasta, and tacos. Can you help the guys choose the safest option? Can you see the broken glass in the salad? Probably not the healthiest option. This fish is still alive. There are worms inside this pasta. As for the soup, it contains little bugs. So, Rachel and Mike should choose the tacos. Emma wants to be a singer, so she started going to the city's most popular and expensive art school. But now, she needs to get some work to pay the bills. Emma found these three job advertisements. Brad needs a manager in his coffee shop. Sophie needs a hostess for her karaoke club on the seventh floor of the local business center. And Lisa offers a part-time job in her model agency. But first, Emma must pay $500 for a four-week training. Only one of these jobs isn't fake. Can you guess which one? There's no seventh floor in this building. Look at Lisa's picture. Someone scrawled the word scammer on her car. So Emma should choose Brad. Nancy took her son Peter to the bank to discuss his college grant. As soon as they entered the hall, Nancy pointed at these three managers and yelled, It's your father! The first manager said, Miss, I've just moved from another state. I've never seen you before. The second person said, I can't be his father because I'm a woman. And the third manager said, I think we went to the same college, but I've never even talked to you. Can you spot who the real father is? The first guy. Look at his face. He has the same eye color as Peter. Jane bought her morning coffee and headed to her office, but she suddenly realized she'd left her wallet at the checkout. She ran back to the coffee shop, but the wallet was gone. Jane saw three people standing nearby and told them, I forgot my wallet here. Have you seen it? Nick, the barista, said, Sorry, I didn't see any wallets. I was focused on the drinks. Danny, the owner, said, Lady, I'm a millionaire. I don't need to steal wallets. 
Kelly, the customer, said, I think I saw someone suspicious. He was holding a pink wallet. It looked exactly like yours. Can you guess which person is a thief? Kelly. Jane didn't mention the color. Tim came for a family dinner to meet the parents of his girlfriend, Hillary. He entered an empty living room and saw a big table with several chairs. Hillary offered him to take a seat. Can you guess which chair Tim should choose? There's a mug near this chair that says, World's Best Dad. So this chair belongs to Hillary's father. This chair is missing one leg. It will be embarrassing to fall in front of everybody. Someone left a red jacket on this chair. Hillary's wearing a red skirt, therefore, it's her chair. Someone put a prank pillow on this chair, so let's rule that option out. There's only one chair to choose from. It looks pretty safe. Bill got a job in the circus. He was walking down the street after his first day and noticed that he'd forgotten his phone at work. Bill went back and heard weird noises from the dressing room. So he went to check and met three clowns. Bill realized that one of them was an imposter right away. Can you spot him too? Look closer. The second clown is wearing a police badge. He must be working undercover. <laughs>